if you're someone that is on the fence about hot foiling or the better press machine, you have to choose between one or the other. You just want more information about it. Or maybe you just want ideas because you've bought the machines already. Today's video is definitely for you. So if you're someone who doesn't have the machine, you can watch today's video no problem. What you're going to do is substitute the hot foiling and the better press technique with a simple background stamp. You can create the same cards and the same idea of cards as I'm creating with a different texture. So How let's dive in. All right. So the first thing I wanted to show with the better press is using different types of plates. So one with fine print, one larger sentiment, and then a full background with both solid and fine lines. So that way you get a little bit of a look into all the different types and what they look like when they are run through the better press machine as well as the hot foil machine. So here is the cover plate that I'm going to be using the sentiments and then the inside sentiments, which are super funny. Can't wait for you to read them. And I'm simply going to begin by placing the cover plate here onto my better press. There are lines for an A2 size card. So I just placed it over top of those and I'm using some mulberry ink here in order to ink up my plate. This is a really dark purple color, very elegant, very nice. You can see I kind of twist and push into the plate in order to get it on here. And you can use your regular dye inks as well. Um, these are just the ones that are recommended for the better press machine, but I have used Catherine Pooler inks and Concord and ninth, and they both work fine. All right, I'm going to grab the top of the better press plate with my card taped onto the front. You can see I taped onto the back of the card and not in the corners like you see on most videos, because if I tape the corners, then they would not um, stamp, right? They wouldn't have the design on them. This is kind of the downside, I guess you could say to using the better press machine with a cover plate versus, you know, smaller plates that are smaller than the surface that you're working on is you have to do it on the back. And I wasn't quite sure if that tape would play a role. Um, there is a little bit of a texture where the tape ended up being, but nothing noticeable. And I use some of this archival cleaner from uh, Ranger in order to clean this off. So I'm going to create a second background as well. I'm going to be using a light blue color just to kind of make a few different examples here. And I'm going to do the exact same thing I did on the previous card. So no need to go through the whole process again. The cool thing about the better press is if you have some areas that are a little bit faded, like I do, you can leave them as is, or you can run it through the machine again because the magnets put everything in the exact place it needs to be. Now I like to show my mistakes in my videos and I made a lot of mistakes when it came to uh, trying to place this down. So in the end, you need to place a sentiment that is going to fold on a side folding card here in the sort of top right area. And so what I did was I taped my card base onto the better press lid, inked up my sentiment, and it did require a little bit of thinking. I foiled about three or four of these before I got it in kind of the right spot. So you just kind of got to estimate because um, there is no, there aren't the lines for placing the card panel horizontally like this. But overall, it was pretty easy to line up. I have to say the only thing you have to make sure is that it's straight. Um, I did line it up perfectly um, from left to right one time, but then um, it wasn't very straight. So may your Facebook wall be filled with messages from people you never talk to. I love that sentiment. I think it's hilarious. And the second one I did was Happy Mother's Day to the woman who does it all. I feel blessed to call you mom. So I thought that was a really nice sentiment to do. And uh, they're both from the same set, which is also nice. Now, as I said in the intro, I'm not a massive fan of the better press for the better press machine itself. I like the better press plates for using for hot foiling. So I'm going to do that today. Now, my machine is a little bit quirky sometimes. Sometimes the green lights don't come on on the left side and sometimes they do. And so I've left this on for several minutes. It is hot enough. So I'm just putting the foil on. So the better press, then I have the foil face down, the pretty side down, my paper, and then the plates, and I'm running it through my machine. Now, because this is a cover plate and it's a uh, better press, I'm not 100% sure with my Nina Solar white cardstock if I'm gonna get a good impression, and I did not. But in order to get this to be right, obviously there wasn't enough pressure in the center of the panel, so I added a piece of cardstock inside my sandwich. You can see that white piece of cardstock poking out in the sandwich there, just to thicken up the plate a little bit. So now I'm gonna run this through my machine and I should get a better result. And so this for me is just some trial and error. I mean, I don't mind having to try this a couple of times. Now I know for sure, okay, with a cover press or a cover plate, better press die or plate or whatever you call them, you, I need one cardstock shim. And I've written that down so I know for next time that when I use my Nina Solar White cardstock, I need a cardstock shim for better press plates. No big deal. 
All right, so when I pull this off, you can see here it's absolutely gorgeous. The detail is incredible. I find the, the better press plates so much more detailed than the hot foil plates and they're so beautiful. So I dye, or I foiled them in both gold and this blue color and both of them turned out absolutely amazing. Just wanted to take a quick moment to say if you wouldn't mind subscribing to my channel, I would appreciate it so, so much. I'm so close to the 100,000 subscribers and I'd love to get there before my birthday in April. Based on my last videos, over half of you are unsubscribed. So literally, if you just hit the button in this video, if you're not a subscriber, you could make my dream come true. So if at this point you don't have a foil machine or you don't have a better press machine and you wanna create cards that look like mine, just grab a background stamp and you can either stamp it on a background to get sort of a better press look. The only difference would be is that you wouldn't get that little bit of raised texture or you can stamp it in embossing ink and heat emboss it in gold or silver or a metallic color and you'll get the same, a similar look as a hot foil look. It won't be quite as shiny and it will have a little bit of a different texture, but overall it's not a big difference. Now, before we get into putting our cards together, I also wanted to use the leftover foil because it's absolutely gorgeous with that floral pattern on it. And the best way I know to do this is to grab yourself one of these solid plates from Spellbinders. They're in a variety of shapes and sizes, circles, squares, rectangles, triangles. And I'm gonna create a hinge on my card. So I've lined up um, my cardstock so that the diamond is going to foil in the center. I'm gonna place the foil pretty side down. My paper then hinges right back on top into the center so it's already lined up for me. And I'm gonna place my plates on here with a cardstock shim because I know that works best. And I made sure to leave this in the machine for about three minutes before I put it through the machine. Like I let that solid foil plate heat up about three minutes. I find it's important. And I also ran it through my machine twice, keeping my hand on the sandwich plates that they didn't wiggle around at all. I find that's kind of important too. I find that this technique is kind of hit or miss. So I didn't get the best result this time. I think I'm gonna need a second piece of cardstock for my sandwich. And again, I'm gonna write this down in my little notebook that I need a second piece of cardstock. I did try running this through my, sheet, my machine again because it's on a hinge, it should have just gone in the same spot, but it did not work. So I'm gonna try it with the blue and hope for the best. So this time, two pieces of cardstock running it through the machine. And fingers crossed that was gonna be the solution for it. I, and this worked perfectly. It looks stunning, I absolutely love it. And if you have any overfoiling because the plates are too thick, you can actually get rid of this by using a sandpaper eraser. The areas where there's just a little bit of foiling will come off a lot easier where there's a lot, but you could also cut down the cardstock if there's just the foiling in the corners, it's no big deal. All right, we're gonna put the cards together now and you can copy these layouts, whether you use a background stamp or any sort of stamping or anything like that, they're nothing super special, but I do wanna show you a couple of looks that you can get. So if you were to cut down your cardstock to be four by five and a quarter inches, then what you're gonna get is the result on the left. And if you were to cut your cardstock to three and three quarters by five inches, you're gonna get the look on the right. So it depends how big of a weight frame you want around it, but I wanted to show you the difference between the two of them. Now, some other ideas for some different looks is you could go ahead and create your backgrounds here. I'm gonna cut pieces off that are about an inch and a half, and I'm gonna use these to create two different cards because I have now two stri strips there that are each an inch and a half, and I have one leftover large piece. And don't forget, you could also use any sort of nesting dies or anything like that to also create yourself two cards out of one panel. So you can see here with my nesting die, I just simply added some foam tape and added that to my card front. I'm gonna show all of these at the end in real time. I just wanted to put these together as quickly as possible. I did a frame to use on the other one and I die cut myself a white piece of this nesting die to put in here on foam tape. I'm adding the large panel here to the front of the card two strips of cardstock to this card. If your sentiments get kind of lost in the background, don't forget you could add yourself a metallic. This is holographic paper. It kind of looks silver when it's not hitting certain lights or cameras. Um, and then I put my sentiment on the top and this helps it kind of pop a little bit. Now for my next card, I thought a sentiment would look kind of odd in a black or a white sentiment would get lost. Black would be too harsh and take away from the background. So what I did was put a bit of double-sided adhesive on a piece of paper and I put the foil down and burnished it with my fingers. 
And just make sure you get the whole area. If not, you'll get sticky areas on your sentiment. And I'm gonna grab my sentiment, place it down. And this way the foil matches the sentiment. I wouldn't recommend doing really thick sentiments or anything because if there ends up being a little bit of stickiness at all left from the adhesive, then if you're using a large sentiment, it might tear you know, your, onto your envelope or something like that. And lastly, to finish off my card, I'm just grabbing a floral die cut here because I feel like this white large nested area needs just something a little extra. I felt like adding a sentiment stamp or die cut just wasn't enough for the card. There wasn't enough on it. So I decided to add this. I don't know if this is my most favorite card in the world, but that's okay. I, I'm going to leave this without a sentiment for now and come back to it. Oftentimes when I come back to my cards, I like them a lot better than when I left off. Sometimes it just means it's the end of my craft time. And I can always add a sentiment later when I need a quick card or I can finish the card at a later date. Oftentimes I'll come up with better ideas later on. So a quick recap of all the cards we made today. Don't forget as well, you can use your background stamps to create similar cards. Now, if you're someone who doesn't have these expensive machines, but you like the foiling look, come meet me over here in this video. I'm gonna show you how to foil with and without heat with inexpensive supplies so that you can achieve a similar look. I'll see you over there.